Hey, um, what, what are your opinions of these laws? The laws are fucked, man. I think they should repeal the marijuana laws. I think they should legalize it. I, think, I do want to implore all the people that may see this film, that hear this out there, to fight these ignorant laws. Somebody to have their whole life who's been working hard and has a proven record of success, who has a lot of people writing recommendations, for some law like this to be able to destroy or almost destroy a person's life over something so small and so insignificant is totally fucked. And I would hope that you people out there would wake up to this fact and fight these kind of ignorant laws because let me tell you, you're losing your rights. You have no constitutional rights when it comes to these issues. These drug laws are totally ignorant. Oh, will you start fighting? You bet I will. People's minds. Maybe it's reefer for madness coming back to us. I'm Lieutenant Dusty Pierpoint. Thurston County Area Crime Stoppers pays up to $1,000 cash for information leading to the arrest and charges being filed on any crime. Remember, you never have to leave your name. Today, Reaper Madness is a reflection of the hysteria surrounding grass in the 30s. Sometimes water is cleansing. Sometimes the distance in our difference is too much to relate. See, there's something difficult about reflection for human beings. One can see the image of oneself and that of the earth together, but cannot reach either one. Whatever I really do see it when I look in the mirror. I see what I look like, but I never see what really is me in the inside. So it is the complete opposite of me. The acts of this world which destroy beings are indecipherable. Technology is a way to sustain immortality. Society is entirely constructed around, you know, living as long as possible, even. We're powerless. The complete opposite of the me. World is a secret, is a secret one, can't, one can't, understand. can't understand. Thus, we build the empire, the control, the power. The illusion. The Fear. Well, as a small child, the thing that scared me the most probably was watching a film called The Incredible Shrinking Man. 57 film, written in a screenplay by Richard Matheson, one of the best damn writers in the business. The fellow goes into a radioactive cloud and starts uncontrollably, proportionately shrinking. Doesn't sound too scary, does it? Except the way it was written and the way it was filmed conveyed a sense of absolute futility. Couldn't do a thing about it, period. Futility, helplessness, is a frightening thing. And even as a kid, it got to the core of me. What I'm most afraid of, one of the things I'm most afraid of is my mother. <laughs> she's, um, she's brilliant, and, and she's beautiful, and she's impossible to, to match or compete with. Um, and I was born a competitive person, so all my life I've been trying to catch up to this woman who has a master's in French literature, a law degree, who's a freelance writer, published. She reviews poetry books for the Kansas City Star. She's just this um, amazing, accomplished woman. And. Um, have you ever tried to carve out your identity against something like that? It's terrifying. I'm not afraid of 
objects. I'm afraid of things like rejection and failure. Yeah. I don't know what else. What were you afraid of when you were a kid? My mother. And um, why? Because she spanked me and I didn't like it. And how has fear affected your life? Fear? Um, I've lived my whole life pretty much governed by fear. More often than not, what I do is not so much because I'm brave enough to do it, so much as that I'm too scared not to do it. Fear is a drive. It drives you to do things, or not do things, which can be bad or good. What am I afraid of most? Um, I think closing my mind to options and like thinking that I know what's what's best without regarding all the other possibilities basically in my life because I've watched people do that before the idea of going to college in one's 40s 3,000 miles away from where one's lived all one's life is a terrifying thought but far more terrifying was this recurring daydream or nightmare I kept having of myself with a long white beard trailing going on a walker in a restaurant going, how do you want them chicken wings? That really scared the bejeez out of me. And uh, so here I am. So uh, fear is an amazing force, and I suppose in the long run it can be used for good or for bad, but uh, it's made me what I am today. What am I afraid of? That I'll hear your voice behind me and forget who I am? No, you're not that kind of person. Who am I? I don't know. You're just not that kind of person. Really? I thought I knew you. I thought I knew you, too. I thought I understood you, but I just talked myself into thinking that I understood you. I assumed that you were just like me. What? Like, when you want to understand someone, you walk in their skin, try on their shoes, and you pay attention, right? But people are chaotic dynamical systems. They're totally unpredictable. And there's, I don't know anyone. I don't know anything. I don't know you. And I have no control over anything, really. Well, Whoa. there are strange attractors. <laughs> True. Chaos is the spice of life. Don't worry. <laughs> but aren't we dead now? What? <laughs> we were recently shot dead, if you'll recall. Do you believe everything you see on TV? But we're on TV. We're on this side. Oh. I don't want to be dead. I, I just bought socks. I've got things I need to do. I've got to, I've got to make something of my life. What can I? It sucks to be dead. We haven't even found any ultimate answers. Empty existentialist aspirations. So we're ghosts then. Boo! Boo! Boring. What do we do now? Hey, I know. You guys could have sex. I mean, that'd be a great plot twist. Yeah, it always gets great ratings. Well, can ghosts have sex? I don't know. Yeah, what? come on, try it. Do it. We want to know. One way to find out. Follow your bliss. Follow your hearts. Let your own.